There are many astonishing ancient structures located within India. Arguably, some of the most intricately detailed structures to be found anywhere on Earth. We have, in the past, covered a number of these structures, not only due to the astonishing detail displayed upon their stonework, but also many other compelling enigmatic details that, to this day, remain unexplained. A personal recommendation for an alternative archaeological researcher of Indian ruins is Praveen Mohan over at Phenomenal Travel Videos. Yet, due to the countless ancient anomalies that can be found within India, we rarely step on each other's proverbial feet. For example, during my own personal research, I have not only found that many of the hillside temples, seemingly hewn from the bedrock of Earth, would even to this day be incredibly difficult to replicate, if not impossible. With some of the most astonishing, not only attached to religious belief and historical rumor to a mountain in the Himalayas, a factor we have also previously covered, with my personal observations, regardless of the fact that many locals pertain to it being an ancient pyramid, discovered noticeable evidence of the entire base of the mountain, once having been hewn into an artificial crescent. Also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone, slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone. End quote. With the stone quarried out to create the astonishing temples, an accepted artistic masterpiece, just like Yongyu Cave in China, have never been found. Additionally, during my own pursuit for clues as to how and indeed who could have created such temples, I have identified signature tool marks in several areas that match that of many other ancient ruins, indeed such as Yangshan Quarry, also in China. Providing strong evidence that Whoever was responsible for these ruins may have indeed been the same civilization, or, as our Atlantean videos have postulated, were commanded to be constructed by a dominant civilization, sharing such technologies with the native populations, employing them to create such wonders. Thus, this would also explain the matching signatures of advanced stone-cutting tool marks found on different continents. Like our research into the variation into ancient stone clamps, a method that was undeniably shared throughout the globe, yet the methods of creating such clamps and the resulting metallurgy varies from continent to continent. As we have previously stated on many occasions, whoever was responsible for these incredible ancient sites seemingly vanished at some point within antiquity, leaving many ancient quarries and temples unfinished. One of the temples that we used to link the tool marks with other sites around the world, Vetivan Coil. One of the precious, abandoned sites that like so many other ancient advanced ruins that were being built around the world, vitally shows the rough stone-cutting signatures left by an advanced machinery that was once responsible for their initial cutting, this before the refinement of such structures' carvings. With many other sites in India, that due to their geographical positioning, and thus protection from erosion, still possesses these same signature tool marks. However, the purpose of today's video is probably one of the most peculiar anomalies in India, and could be perceived by some as one of the most compelling pieces of evidence of advanced ancient machinery having once been responsible for these ancient structures. Known as the Tanjore Brihadiswarar Temple, which was supposedly constructed by the Cholas. However, the temple possesses a characteristic which was not only out of the capabilities of the Cholas dynasty, but to me, is compelling proof of a pre-Diluvian civilization having been responsible for its construction. As atop the temple, at a height of 216 feet above ground level, is a solid lump of granite carved with perfection yet has been realized at an astonishing weight of 80 tons. To put that in perspective, according to academia, an ancient culture with no advanced technologies 
especially lifting technologies, a dynasty well studied and explored by modern academia. The heartland of the Cholas was the fertile valley of the Kaveri River. Although their power was considerable and was probably complemented by such claimed of astonishing feats of architecture, regardless, the question remains. How did this civilization raise such an enormous stone? It seems to us that such claims were merely made to impress their enemies and allies, and the fact that academia is severely lacking any explanation as to how such a feat was accomplished strongly supports my suspicion that the temple is in fact an antediluvian ruin, and as such, highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Has ancient alien technology finally been discovered within Russia? According to several talented UFO enthusiasts, along with a number of scientists, that is exactly what has happened. A team from Princeton University in America and the University of Florence in Italy have discovered a quote, quasi-crystal, so named because of its unorthodox arrangement of atoms, found within a meteorite from a remote region of northeastern Russia. This crystal, long thought impossible to be formed naturally due to being too energetically unstable and atomically manipulated. When the team discovered that the meteorite contained this mysterious, ancient, intelligently designed material, they merely moved the goalposts, simply stating that it can indeed be formed naturally. Technically, scientists describe quasi-crystals as quasi-periodic, being manually ordered, no longer found on the periodic table. Although they exhibit a pattern that fills all available mass continuously, they lack what scientists and mathematicians term translational symmetry. Simply put, they are not naturally occurring materials. The meteorite in which it was found is believed to be around 4.5 billion years old. Yet alas, when it picked up this perplexing and possibly alien passenger may remain unknown. UFO enthusiasts and scientists alike have previously hypothesized that evidence for alien life would, in all possibility, be found in a form such as this. Pointing out that quasi-crystals, being a novel form of matter, should actually be seen as artifacts of alien artificially created technology. No one has ever been able to explain how quasi-crystals can be formed by natural processes, and no one is ever likely to. It just does not happen. They're forbidden symmetry, making them impossible to be formed naturally. The only other known quasi-crystals, besides those found in the Chukotka meteorites, were only recently synthesized within laboratory conditions by scientists. Being very hard, with low friction characteristics, also a low heat conduction, quasi-crystals are a very useful product, used in a wide range of high-speed technologies, such as the coatings of airplanes and stealth fighters. Two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling the idol of the American Chemical Society and one of the most famous scientists in the world, argued till his last days against quasi-periosity in Crystal's mere existence. He didn't even believe we would ever manage to create it. Does this sound like a naturally occurring material to you? How did this complex material end up on and within an ancient meteorite? Did this lump of space debris once collide with an alien craft? somewhere out there in deep space? It seems, regardless of what certain scientific bodies would have you presume, that is indeed the most likely scenario. Hakeberg, meaning Fortress of Hake, is an ancient, once fortified ruin found within the Gurpinar district of the Van province in Turkey's Easter Anatolia region. It was used by Eurasian kings as a fortress during the 8th century BC. According to academia and Armenian folklore, the fortress was built by Haik, the legendary founder of the Armenian nation. It was situated close to the site where he slew the invading Babylonian King Bel, who, according to said legends, was in fact an ancient giant. Haik and his people had migrated south toward the warmer lands. There, they discovered a wicked giant known as Bel. 
Bell tried to impose his tyranny upon Hake's people, but Hake refused to submit. Hake eventually rose up and defeated Bell in what has become known as the Battle of Giants. However, what is intriguing regarding this story is the fact that the sites mentioned are actually ruins left by the same highly advanced and thus highly capable lost civilization, responsible for many of the exquisitely stone-built sites which dot the many continents of Earth. Additionally, the fact that ancient giants are again mentioned surrounding such ruins could be seen as a compelling lead. Easter Island, Guatemala, the Amazon, Peru, South America, the list goes on, all with their own intriguing tales of ancient giants, either once inhabiting said sites, or in some cases, noted as being responsible for their construction. Much of the ancient site is now extremely eroded, yet in many areas, such as Cavustepe, a number of remarkably refined stone blocks are still to be found, presumably once foundation stones, these blocks still retaining their extraordinary machined-like appearance. These blocks were so perfectly carved, we can only replicate such levels of accuracy using modern-day technologies. The question is, how did a civilization so far back within known history create so many stones cast to the same degree of precision. What's more, these masterfully and mysteriously created stones are seemingly placed upon an even older site, one clearly of an even greater antiquity. Were these newer stone blocks actually robbed stonework from another area of the structure? These blocks then used by a later civilization to build upon these ruins? Are we actually looking upon two lost ancient civilizations' work in ascending order? Rather like what we have postulated later covered the enormous skeletal blocks of the Great Pyramid. Were these sites actually the work of a lost civilization of ancient giants? Or are all these separate accounts of the same beings found all over the world a mere coincidence? With so many sites and legends attached thereof, telling the same thing, it is only a matter of time before the truth is proven beyond doubt.